Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Blastering. Today, what we're going to do is some ceiling repair. I'll show you uh, what we're going to do. Uh, the ceiling leaked, the roof leaked. It, he had sheetrock all over this entire ceiling. And so I came and I looked at it and he says, what do you recommend, Kirk? And so I got up here and I thought, well, I got to feel it first because there's a lot of ways to repair this. Now, what I did was I was feeling right here to see if it had separated from the keys. And my conclusion after messing around with this is this should come off to about right here. And then what you do is you, you on whether or not it's a ceiling or a wall, guys, you, you find it, you see that? If you don't see it, you can hear it. It's loose all the way about to here. And it might as well go all the way to the wall, guys. And before you take that off, you've got to score it. Now, this is the worst job in the plastering industry, or one of the worst ones. This is cement. You've got to take about five of these blades here, put it at a quarter inch, and score it. Basically, you're just going over it and over it and over it. Just It'll take an hour to score this hole, maybe longer. Let me see what the dust it creates. If you're going to do it, Jay's actually going to score this for me. He's got his mask and uh, goggles and all that crap because you're going to need it. What I told the fellow was, you've got a lot of options here. You can sheetrock just like they did. You could wire it, which lasts longer, but if it were me, what I would do is I'd remove what's bad, fix it, and skim coat the entire thing because the rest of the ceiling is in great condition. Uh, anyway, that's what I did on my house, and that was 25 years ago. My house was built uh, in 1890, so it's an older home, too, and 25 years later, it's still intact. And what I did is, a few of my ceilings, I sheetrocked, which were so bad, and the rest, I just patched in and skimmed them. Anyway, that's what we're going to do here. And by the way, guys, he says, well, can you match that texture? And I thought, sure, that's actually a pretty simple texture. Let me, let me tell you folks something about interior texture. And I'm, I got a catalog here, Bond Tools. They send me a lot of stuff. One of the benefits of doing instructional videos, they're always sending me stuff. They got rollers that, this is called a tree bark roller. They've got some that look like leaves, uh, call it uh, two different types of leaves. They both look like weed or marijuana leaves to me. I said it, but they do look like that. Anyhow, they've got, uh, in the book, they've got these uh, dabbers, um, we call stipple brushes too. This is in the interior plastering trade, guys. They've got single, double ones. I doubt you could see that from that distance. But they also have two uh, rollers with, like this. The rollers have a lot of different types of uh, grooves in them. And you can create whatever finish you want. This finish here, all it is is a heavy roller. It's not the one I brought, but I just brought this up for an example. I'm going to get the fattest roller they have, and while the plaster is still wet, I'm just going to go over it. And by the way, guys, yeah, this is where I get some of my plastering tools, my swimming pool trowels. They sell everything here. Mixers, the boots you wear to walk on, stilts, you name it, they got it. Bontools.com. Anyway, I thought I'd throw them a bone because they're always sending me a bunch of stuff. Anyhow, Jay's going to go ahead and pull this out, which is probably going to take about two hours because if it's done wrong, this whole ceiling is going to come down. So we'll show you how we patch it up and then I'll show you how we skim it. Okay, guys, Jay did the grunt work, the hard work no one wants and pulled all that out. This pink stuff, that's weld, plaster weld for interiors. They make a lot of bonding agents. First, he wiped the ceiling down of all the dust. Then he rolled on the plaster well. Now, he made me some 20 minute mud. What's 20 minute mud? 20 minute mud means you got 20 minutes to put it on. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. And what we wanna do now, guys, is key this. When I say key it, I mean I wanna go inside and mushroom on the top. That's what these are, keys, so the, the plaster adheres now, this shouldn't take me too long to do. What I like to do is get my edges first. By the way, guys, if you ever find yourself in this situation, 
Uh, you can leave the screws in. Once you take them out, put them back in. It just leads to extra strengthening of, in case it was loose. I determined that this is not that bad, this ceiling. It, uh, I think when, when the fella decided to do this, he had other patches that were real bad, just said, hey, why not do them all? Anyway, uh, get myself another scoop. 20 minute mud means 20 minutes. If you got a dirty bucket, which has cement on it, 20 minute mud is now five minute mud. You gotta have clean tools, clean bucket, clean drill, clean paddle, everything gotta be clean, otherwise it accelerates this. And earlier when I was talking about those rollers, that one that leaves a flower texture, I called my wife, I said, baby, what's a poncetta? And she said, that's a plant that has red leaves. And I said, what's that look like? And she said, remember every Christmas I buy those poinsettias that had the red leaves? And I thought, no, but that's what that one roller that I showed earlier is designed to do. My wife is a chemist. She knows all, all about different things. If I have a question, she's like my own Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang. She knows it all. In fact, when I'm reading, I'll see a word I don't understand. Five, seven syllables. I'll say, baby, what's this word mean? And she'll not only tell me the meaning, but the definition or, or how to spell it too. That's how clever she is. We make a good pair. I'm street smart, she's book smart. Anyhow, let's see, I might have enough in here to finish this. All right, let's see where I'm at. Okay, putting the second coat already. And yeah, guys, let's say, hey, how come you don't use Structolite? I've used Structolite in the past a lot, but just not lately because I'm used to doing two coat work same day with the Structolite. I understand now they have a, an agent which you can put in it kind of like Luminite and it accelerates it, but I haven't had the opportunity to use it. Anyway, let's see. This has got, I have enough mud in here for my second coat. Yeah. This, guys, when you're doing interior stuff, especially above your head, half the battle is mixing it properly. People say, how do you do that to make it look easy? Because it's mixed well. If it's not mixed well, I cannot make it look easy because it won't be easy. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to allow this to set for about, oh, let's see. 10 more minutes, then it's gonna be hard and I can steel trowel it and get this finished right here. Then we'll show you how to skim coat everything else when we get to that stage. Okay guys, that was fast, I'm back. Uh, this coat is done. We are skimming the whole ceiling anyhow. So this is fine just the way it is. Next time you see us, this will be hard and it'll be, I'll put a little bit of weld creed on it, why? because my suction here, when I color coat, or when I plaster this whole top, it's gonna give me, I'm gonna to switch to a 40 minute mud, meaning I got 40 minutes to do it. But if that 40 minute mud hits this where it's raw, it will just dry up and it'll give me a different texture. So we gotta allow this to dry completely. Put some of this uh, plaster weld on it. We'll show you at that point. All right, guys. I spread a little bit right here. We're using a 40 minute mud. That's, a, um, that's about how much time I need. Jay was up here applying plaster weld here. Why? Because we've got to kill the suction, otherwise it's gonna dry too hard. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm using a huge trowel. This is a 20 by five. Most of you guys will never need a 20 by five, but I used to use the 20 by fives when I was union and we did cove ceilings. And the reason I did it is because you don't see the trowel marks but even if, say right there, you see some trial marks, that's okay. Because this roller here, when I get to it, 
is going to take those out. Now, what I'll generally do, guys, when I'm skim coating the ceiling is I'll go, say, an eighth inch to three sixteenths. How do you know? It takes practice, guys. It just takes practice. And by the way, see where this wood trim is. What you don't want to do is have any dust on that wood trim. If you have a, any dust, sand, rocks, it will pull this mud and drag it right through your finish. So make certain that you clean that trim very, very well. Let's see. So. And I prefer this 20 inch trowel because it's like a, a, a derby somewhat. It's, it straightens everything for me. And actually I get this trowel too from Bond Tools, same company I was showing you that makes the, the paint rollers. By the way too guys, these rollers that I was showing you earlier, get this ladder out the way, this textured and this one, we're going to do a video on that. And if you type in plaster finishes using textured rollers, you'll be able to see the different types of finishes you can create with those. They're really cool. They even uh, fascinate the heck out of me. I've looked at a whole lot of finishes inside where I'll tell people, that's not a, a finish that a trowel can make. And they go, how do you know? I said, I've been doing this for 30 years. I know. And they go, well, what type of roller did it? And I said, that I don't know. But uh, there's so many different ones. Let's see. All right. OK. It's just a lot of elbow grease, guys. Nothing if you know how to do it. And gotta remember, guys, go at least an eighth to three sixteenths. And I know a lot of you guys will say, how the heck do you know when you got an eighth to three sixteenths? Practice, that's all it is, is practice. Okay, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more mud. And then after I spread this, a little bit. Jay's going to go mix me up another bucket or one last bucket while I finish spreading this out because we are always multitasking. And the fact is, this stuff is uh, 40 minutes, but I'm working on the ceiling here. It's hot outside, the window's open, and so it's drying. I can feel it drying right through the, by troweling it. So I may end up, while Jay's mixing this next bucket, I may just uh, texture that because there's a certain amount of time you have. If it gets too hard, this roller here, and the nap is uh, one inch. These naps come in eighth of an inch all the way up to inch and a half, probably even thicker than that. And that just means how thick they are. All right, so I'm gonna hit it here, hit it here. And because Jay just applied the plaster weld to what we did right here, I'm gonna allow that time to set and I'm gonna work over there. I can see already I need another half a bucket. So he's gonna mix that. And when he comes back, we'll continue with the sh show. Okay, guys. Jay just mixed me up another bucket, which gives me enough to finish the rest of the ceiling. While he was mixing, I was touching this, and I thought, damn, misjudged the mud. It's 45 minute mud, but the heat is rising, and it's hot as a sauna up here. So I went ahead and textured some of this with this roller. Uh, this wall right here is exactly what they have. It's inconsistent, which is good for us. Uh, very inconsistent. So what I'm going to do is, because we're losing the walls due to the heat and humidity up this high, which I didn't calculate, should have got 90 minute mud. I'm going to go ahead and spread this in. As I'm spreading this, Jay's going to be right behind me um, doing the texture, but we will show you how we get this texture uh, 
when we got it under control. Okay guys, for the sake of showing you how we do this, we take our roller and just roll it out. Now, I'm still going to knock this down because we're doing a few different things here. This, the walls here, it's like a knockdown dash. So we're rolling it and then we're going to knock that down. Now, some of it I've knocked down already and some of it I haven't. Like, um, oh gee, in the corner there, but I don't know what the camera will show. Right now, we're about where we want to be. And I've got to let this set and I'm going to take my uh, big Congo swimming pool trout and just barely knock it down. And it's, it's somewhat of a knockdown dash without dashing it, just using a, a good roller. Anyhow, when we get to the very end, we'll show you the finished coat. Okay guys, I'm just cleaning up my tools now. Uh, I'm going to show you one last little piece because it's the end of uh, this so-called show. Uh, I show on video how to straighten trowels. If you type in how to straighten a trowel, it'll show you how to straighten a trowel so that it's not bent the wrong way when you're doing plaster. I don't have a video of how to straighten a hawk because these are magnesium. This is my good hawk. And look at the difference between the two as far as the size. It makes life a lot easier to have that extra two inches. But this one is so cockeyed and crooked, even old Kirk can't fix it. Anyhow, I'm down here cleaning my tools. And I brought that one up thinking I would fix it, but it's a goner. Anyhow, this last little piece, guys. Now that we've spread it out, it, it is again, it's sort of like a knockdown dash. This looks, you gotta be able to judge this uh, plaster. And I'll tell you, uh, no matter how many years you got in, it, it still takes a lot of practice. You see, that's a, that's a dash finish somewhat. Now you take your trowel and you just go over it. And if, if that's not enough, you go over it a little heavier, a little harder, because that's starting to set. It's really hot in this room because it's very hot outside. I didn't account for the heat. Otherwise, I would have got 90 minute mud instead of 45 minute mud and wouldn't have had to hustle as much. But anyway, guys, this finish is what they have here. This is uh, painted about 10 times. It's a 100 year old house. So when they paint this, they just have to prime it and paint it, and it should match right on the money. It takes a little bit to get this, and this one video may not show you all the little things I couldn't cover, but we do appreciate you watching. My name is Jay. Uh, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera, and as usual, folks, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.